Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. Today we are going to learn how to handle rows per page in SSRS report. We'll be using a row number function and ceiling function to handle the situation. So let's go ahead and create a report and then we can specify how many rows we want per page. So let me take you to SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio and this is the, the query I'm going to use. So this is simple select query getting all those records from sales total table and the table is in this sales database so let's go to ssdt sql server data tools and create a new report i have already created a ssrs project so i don't have to create a new one and if you don't know how to do it you can watch my previous videos we need a shared data source in this case we have a shared data source that's pointing to the sales database if you don't have shared one you can go ahead and create new one by right clicking and add new data source uh, you can use embedded uh, and that's uh, also uh, option uh, when we will be creating a report uh, but that will be only available to that uh, report uh, so right click on the reports uh, and add new item and uh, we are using a uh, create a new empty report here let's rename this one called rows per page in ssr in report or ssrs report whatever add now empty report is created uh, let's go ahead and uh, click on uh, data sources add data source and here we have option to create embedded or use the shared one we are going to use the shared one so ds sales and now we have a use shared data source here hit okay next part create a data set that will return us a rows or a result set we call it d set sales total use embedded data set select your data source and paste your query here you can use a store procedure or you can select your records from multiple tables views or function whatever you have and hit ok now right click here and insert a tab a table here now let's put some uh, fields here so we can see we have sales uh, person first name last name and uh, let's bring in another one product name so that's all we need in this case uh, our report is uh, ready and uh, if you see that uh, it is returning us uh, some records uh, if you hit new next uh, so we'll see the records for the next uh, page so that's how we will keep uh, taking a look but we don't know how many records are really returned so first thing let's figure out how many results uh, how many records uh, are returned per page so i'm going to do few of the things here first let's uh, change our header columns uh, so make them a uh, bold and italic so we would know that okay our report uh, where it start and where it uh, where it ends so now let's change the background color that looks good much better next part let's add the row number column so that will tell us like how many rows we can, we are seeing so i'm going to right click here go to expressions and use the row number function so to see the use the row number function sorry you just say row number and then here you have two options the scope as a string you can provide exact the name of the data set or you say nothing when you say nothing it is already a mean you are using this one as level of data set if you have multiple data sets i i just recommend using um you know the data set name but you can use nothing as well so let's uh, in this case we said d set and uh, we, we have sales total but in the next uh, expression we can write nothing it will work the same way hit okay now let's rename this one and call the row number or serial number whatever you like for this column so you can see that one to let's say one to 46 records or rows are returned on this first page and then we can take a look and uh, this these many rows are on the second page but what we want we want to have like let's say maybe 10 or 20 rows per page that's what our goal is and we want to write that logic so on top of this row number i'm going to use uh, let's divide this uh, row number with the 10 or maybe 20 and see what we get so i'm going to build the logic step by step let's go and write uh, click and add a new column here we will be using uh, expressions so I'm going to use the same expression pretty much here. so we say row number nothing divided by 10 you can divide with 5 or 20 or whatever you like so let's divide with 10 now and see what happened so now we get all these values so it start with 0 0.01 0 0.02 and all that and then you can see that at the end we have one whole number so it means 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1 
20 divided by 10 is equal to 2 so we know that there are other functions we can make use of them one of them is called ceiling so ceiling let's say if I will provide these values 0 0.01 to 0 0.9 to ceiling he the ceiling is going to return me one for all those values so it will return us the first whole number for all these decimal points so for these one let's say for 1.1 so next whole number is a 2 so for these it will return us a 2 so let's use that ceiling function and take a look what happened so here we will say row row number sorry divided by 20 that these are the values we are getting here so next one I'm gonna go ahead and use the ceiling so we, we are trying to do something like okay we, if we can build a, a logic to divide these rows in a group so so that's what we are trying to do insert a column here and then we call this one go to expressions and write expression and here we will be saying ceiling and the, in all the other function or the expression is going to be same row number nothing and then divided by 10 so now we will see how ceiling will work and give us uh, some values here we can say ceiling just to see like how it is working and as you can see that uh, okay row number one two three and all those are working just fine then we divide the row numbers with the 10 uh, so we got these decimal numbers uh, and then we use a ceiling and as we know that ceiling give us the first whole number so point for zero point zero one the next whole number is one so for point zero two next number is one so point zero three and the next whole number is the one so that's why we are getting one so for next when we have one point one here the next whole number is two so that's why ceiling is returning us two and for all of those values is returning us two now what we have built we have built a logic that can divide our rows and if we can use the group on in SSRS so we can create the group by using these values so that's the logic we are building now what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna create a group right click here add a group parent group instead of using the value from the drop down I'm gonna write those expression that give us that group remember we have written ceiling row number and then we have nothing because we are checking on the data set level divided by 20 sorry 10 and the, this is what we are you, you, we are going to use as expression in the group it okay now a group is created let's take a look how it look like okay it gave us error a sort expression for tablex uh, tablex x uh, sorry uh, tablex one uh, use the row number function and row number function cannot be used in the sort expression we don't need the sorting we already know that we get the values for 1 to 10 we get 1, one to, uh, 11 to 20 we get 2 and all that we don't need sorting so I can do one thing I can go to the group property and say group property and say sorting and here it is using sorting uh, some expression delete those and we are good now let's go, uh, take a look now you see that okay we have created the group uh, by using these ceiling values uh, so we created the row number we divided with 10 uh, sorry <laughs> it is totally wrong here I said divided by 10 so it is divided by 10 and then we have get these values uh, and then we group by that uh, value or expression here our heading is wrong so let's do this one 10 we are all fine here now this is correct uh, everything is looks good so if uh, we remove this uh, or uh, actually let's first break the this group per page we know that break by uh, we can use a page break and divide or break these values per uh, page according to the group so that's easy let's go ahead and do it now how we do that go to the group and say group properties and page break and say between each instance of the group fine now take a look so what we have here now our values are divided among the pages so first group is on one page and second group is on the second and we know that each of them has 10 records so that's great we can uh, now we are all good one more thing I would like to add a report title here so let's click here and add a page header so we this can repeat on each of the page and then we insert uh, and text box let's say we call this one sale report now I'm gonna bold background color and then uh, what we can do in the middle and maybe change some font size 
and also what we want to do few things uh, we don't need those uh, columns so this is sale report uh, this looks good these columns are not required anymore i might keep the row number because that's how i would know that okay on this page these many rows uh, are uh, th that's what i'm taking a look so from 1 to 10 are here and on the next page 2 to um, 11 to 20 and the next one i have 21 to 30 so that's how i will take a look now i'm going to go ahead and delete these columns what i don't right click delete column delete columns and associated groups so that don't do that because it will drop that group as well and if we drop the group then how we will be dividing our page breaking so we can't do that so delete the column only but leave the group as it is so and next we don't need these columns as well we only need a row number and you call this one serial number or maybe whatever you want to call you can have it now once uh, this is done our report is all good one more thing maybe we would like to have uh, this header on each of the page so that will help let's uh, go back here and then if i click uh, here advanced mode and in the static uh, i can press f4 and uh, sorry and uh, repeat on new page true and then uh, also keep with the group so i will say after okay now if you take a look here what happened we have sale report now we have the header on this column sorry header uh, header columns row on uh, this uh, page and if i click next uh, we have uh, the same information but row numbers are changing so our values from 1 to 10 we see on the first page 11 to 20 on second page and uh, that's how they will be changing so we have uh, created a beautiful report uh, and we can handle uh, these number of uh, rows per page now this can be make more dynamic uh, if you would like to use a parameter value and then uh, we can pass that parameter parameter value to the expressions uh, instead of writing 10 or 20 you can have a parameter where your user will pass the value and you can just uh, change that i will go ahead and create a report actually uh, with that parameter and video so you can see that uh, in the next video i will do something like that thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next video